All right. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? I'm uh, Jim Kresge. This is Eric Miles. We are going to talk to you today about advanced architecture and development practices when engineering Cortana skills for multiple device types. I, uh, I have to admit, the title is a little bit presumptuous. Advanced is kind of a relative term, but we're, we're going to spend a lot of time in code. I think we're going to talk about some pretty challenging problems, um, so hopefully the, the presentation lives up to the title name. Um, so what are we going to talk about? I wanted to give you just a sense of what we're going to say so you can be listening with that in mind, get, get the most out of it. Um, we absolutely got some scars and t-shirts from the work that we've done with voice UIs, and we think we've had some good ideas about how to do them along the way. We want to share that with you so you can avoid the bad stuff and take advantage of any of the good stuff that you think is, uh, is worthwhile. Some of the to topics specifically we're going to cover, we're going to talk about what's creating a lot of complexity in this space. It's an explosion of NLP platforms, device types, some really interesting ways that people are interacting with devices, particularly mixed mode devices. Um, and then we're going to talk about how we solve for some of that complexity, both in the solution architecture and in the patterns and abstractions in the code uh, that we put together. So first, a little bit of context. Why do we care about this and sort of where's some of the complexity coming from? Um, it's absolutely true that, that the front door of the internet is moving and multiplying. I think that that we are at the early stage of a revolution in how people are interacting with technology. I think five or ten years in the future, if you show someone a computer mouse, that's going to seem as odd and archaic as a punch card might seem today. And with all this that's happening, there's just this explosion out there of platforms for AI and NLP. Cortana is a great one, but you probably have heard of some others that are out there. Um, and there's also an explosion of devices as well across these platforms. There were two or three that were just announced over the last week. Again, I'll, I'll talk, say a word or two about that. But the takeaway from this is there's an element of complexity that just comes from managing a large number of NLP platforms and partners and all the devices and all the variations that come along with it. Um, so another area of complexity is in how people are interacting with these device types, particularly if you look at how they interact with voice-only devices, sort of the speaker model, um, versus some of these mixed-mode devices that have both voice and display. Um, and people are, are interacting with the mixed-mode in basically two ways. One is voice is simply something that lets them invoke something else that they expect to do on the screen. They're opening files, uh, they're doing a search on the web, something like that, but they actually expect the response to come from the screen. The other way is they're having a full voice conversation, but they're expecting the screen to actually add value beyond the voice conversation that they're having. So the screen is not just, here's what you said, here's what the computer said. It's actually uh, adding value, adding flavor, adding context to the voice conversation that you're having, so additional data from the screen. So I think the big thing to take away here is there's a variety of ways that people are interacting with voice and conversational UIs. That's another layer of complexity that you have to be ready to account for um, in your solution. So, uh, the, the first place that we thought about taking care of this complexity is in the solution architecture. Um, we really wanted to build this, my pointer is not working super great, but this Capital One skill portion, our code, so that it could be effectively reused across any number of NLP platforms that we wanted to integrate with. Um, we had a hypothesis that the utterance intent parameter model for speech and and conversational dialogue was going to be something that would be reused uh, across most of the platforms. Luckily for us, it was. Um, and what we're able to do is really with just a few minor changes to that little box there called interaction adapters, is really plug and play with any number of NLP solutions and get a huge amount of re reuse from the back end uh, of, our, of our solution here, both the code and the Capital One skill and uh, the Capital One APIs that, that sit behind it. You'll also notice there's this rectangular box called the Conversation Factory, and that's where a lot of the abstractions and uh, important patterns live um, that are handling a lot of this complexity for us. Eric's actually going to go through that in some detail and walk you through the code of how we, how we manage that complexity in some, some different ways. Um, 
let's see. This is a blow up of the conversation factory. It's a little bit of an eye chart. Uh, I want to introduce you to the concepts and, and Eric will take you through uh, how, 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 we, how we built it. Um, the intent middleware, which is where things sort of start, <coughs> is responsible for routing incoming requests to the appropriate intent handler for whatever the intent might be. And that the intent handler is what gets all the data, puts it all together for the reply that we want to make. The adapter factory and interaction adapter are the things that actually abstract us away from any one single NLP platform. Um, again, you know, Cortana is awesome, but there's others out there, and we wanted to be in partnership with all of them and, and get a lot of reuse across that. The display factory and the speech factory are things that let us create responses for uh, any specific NLP platform and any specific device on those platforms. So you may have uh, seen that Amazon just came out with the show that was in the news the last couple of days. The Harman Kardon uh, Invoke is out there for Katana. There's a number of others that have been mentioned. That lets us handle all of that uh, variation and complexity. And lastly, I mentioned the intent handler um, is responsible for orchestrating all the back-end service calls, re re retrieving all the data that we need to send a response through to the, uh, to the consumer. So um, this is basically the realm where we're handling a lot of this complexity. Eric's going to take a few minutes and walk you through the different pieces and show you some of the code and how we've done it. All right. Thank you, Jim. So uh, you can have the, the greatest toolkit, the greatest API, the greatest SDK that you're integrating with your, with your, with your application. But unless you still follow good engineering practices, it, it becomes a beast to manage and to, to update with new requirements, um, new channels, new platforms, et cetera. So uh, really what the, the crux of this discussion is, is while we did a great job of siloing our, our different layers of our application, this, this uh, conversation factory where we abstract out these channels um, really allows us to, to change on a dime and, and support a new channel um, when we get approached by business and asking us to, to do something new. So um, th the main component, the meat and potatoes of the, of the abstraction is what we're calling the interaction adapter. And um, as Jim alluded to, we found in these reactive um, turn-based paradigms for conversational UIs, there's a lot of similarities. So we try to take out as much reusable stuff and shove it into this base class and then defer to channel implementations to provide some of the, the, different, the differences between those different channels. Um, we'll go over those in some code in a second. And again, as he alluded to, Display Factory, we identified all of our use cases and um, put them into an interface. We have channel-specific um, implementations, whether it's a single uh, skill card with a simple text, or if it's a rich UI like the Cortana Canvas, um, you can provide an implementation and, and, and get what you need out of that. And then um, down at the bottom, Speech Factory. It's a little bit probably misnamed. Um, it's more of a SSML factory. We have found that the different channels we need to support, while they do support SSML, um, they all support SSML differently. So for instance, um, when we do multi-account response, responses, we say um, your venture card ending in one, two, three, four. Well, one SSML for, for one channel would actually say 1234, on a different channel would say 1234. So um, depending on the channel, we may have to alter exactly what we say. Um, and the, the speech factory provides that ability. Last, uh, SSML support and then dates were the two things we identified. But again, the facility is there if we need to, to expand on that and other things. And I, and I really do think, um, based off our, 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 our design sessions and where our designers are going, um, we'll probably we'll have a, a real speech factory where we'll change our experience based off um, the, the devices we're supporting. Uh, I already hear our designers saying, um, we're going to change what speech we give based off whether you know, you're sitting on a laptop with Cortana and it's within touching distance, or whether it's a headless device across the, across the room, or a smaller device with a screen. Um, they want to change how we, what, we, what exactly we say. So again, we'll, we'll probably have a, a real speech factory here um, that changes the voice experience. So enough of uh, PowerPoints and diagrams. Let's get into some code really quick. Hopefully you guys can see this. So um, Microsoft Engineering Conference, it's appropriate. We actually writ, wrote our application in Node.js with TypeScript. So uh, if you're not familiar with type, TypeScript, go. I recommend checking it out. Um, so again, here's our speech factory. Really small interface. Uh, we have speak last for and speak date. And again, those are the only items that we've found so far that we really need to support, but we can do more. Uh, our display factory. Again, we've pulled out all of our business use cases that we need to support, things like show transaction list, show account summary, show O, show pay bill, et cetera. Um, 
We can do implementations that are, that are channel specific. Now let's get into that meat and potatoes I discussed. So the interaction adapter, uh, we found that in these turn-based model paradigms, the, the uh, most cases we'll need to ask our customers something. So we provided a, a base implementation of ask. So um, we need a response from the customer. We'll keep the session open to ensure we get that response. Uh, we'll do tell. So we'll tell them something. Maybe we'll give them their account balance. And then um, electively, we could close the session or the conversation should we choose. But most likely, that's the end of the use case. All the, uh, we found reprompt is also available across these different channels. And then we also have uh, multiple other methods that we use to, to, support, our, to support our requirements that, that the business has given us. And then again, um, we'll get here, we'll, now we'll see our abstractions. And these are where things change generally from, from platform to platform. So again, they all, they all go down to, to get intent is identifying um, exactly what the user intended to do and how you get that information out from the channel specific implementation changes. Um, get argument or, or entities or slots if you're available with a couple of different channels. Cortana calls it entities. Um, managing state, so we have get state and clear state. Um, and some other methods here, get user context. We ensure we abstract out the, the idea of user information so we can pass that through our different layers in a channel agnostic way. Um, then you'll see here, get speech factory, get display factory. The interaction adapter is obviously aware of the channel that it's, that it's um, supporting. So we can mix and match uh, the speech factory and display factories as we need, um, depending on uh, the devices we're trying to support. Uh, we have a display. And uh, send ultimately is responsible for, hey, we're done pulling together our response. Send it on to our customer. Now, uh, let's get into an example of a, an actual implementation of, of these three factories, um, or these three abstractions. Uh, we'll do MSBot adapter. And, and what we really found, we started looking at the MSBot framework. Microsoft guided us, thank you. Um, again, because our, our business really wanted this rich canvas um, the MSBot framework was the way to go. And uh, going by the booth, we found that they're, they're offering an even more complex way to do really rich UIs with uh, adapter cards, or uh, I think those are what they're called, adapter cards. Um, so what we do here in our constructor, we're taking um, the, the bot framework session and bot args, and we're going to save intent. And uh, we're also going to pull out private conversation data. Again, we, we need to manage state between our different, our different requests and response. Uh, the bot framework provides a way for us to manage that. Several different ways, but we use private conversation data. Here you'll see we're going to instantiate the MS bot speech factory, and this is responsible for, for providing that, that SSML um, implementation specific to that channel. And then we also have here the MS bot display factory. Um, now, if we needed to, or if, let's say we're supporting a different channel, again, mix and match implementations here. The, the business specific code or our handler is going to be agnostic. We're essentially going to tell it to do something. And if we don't need to do anything, it's going to ignore it. Or if it's going to be simple, fine. We could have a, a no op adapter here that just simply receives a message and does nothing with it. And then here, uh, we're building up context again to pass down to our different layers. And then now we actually have our channel specific implementation. So uh, getting intent, we had saved that, saved that off in the constructor, but it's now available. Um, you know, built-in intents, every channel has their own. Um, Microsoft, uh, uh, for Cortana, Microsoft's prepended, so we're just going to strip that off because we deal with intents on a channel agnostic way through the, through the rest of the, the skill. Um, getting arguments out, we're going to use the bot framework entity recognizer, find entity. We're passing in the entities and the key of the entity. So one thing is we're ensure, we're, we need to ensure is when we're building our interaction model and all these different channels, that we use the same names. That way, we don't have to do any sort of translation here from key to key. Um, since we own the interaction model, we can change that. That's what we do. It's, it's easy to, to run with that. A uh, couple of no ops. Uh, again, managing state here. A um, couple more no ops. Depending on platform, you may, you may be able to support this. User context. Um, and then we'll get down to send, kind of tidying everything up and sending on. We save off previous intent and entities. We have business use cases where we may need to interrogate previous uh, requests. So we, sh we shove those in state. We use them later on. Um, we do a little bit of uh, interrogation of maybe the intent that came across the wire. Should we end the session or whether it was ask versus tell? And we, uh, we determine whether or not we need to just close the conversation off. Um, we also do, if anybody's used our skill before, um, we also append, you know, how else can I help you? So if we're keeping the conversation of the session open and we finish the use case, we'll, uh, we'll politely ask if there's anything else we can do for you. 
Here we're going to set up um, the canvas with uh, the, the MSBot framework specification. So it's, it's done via the interface of attachments. Here you can see we're going to save off our state into the private conversation data of the, of the session object. And then finally, we're getting to the crux of actually sending off our response. Um, we do a check to see, because there are two different ways of sending that response. Uh, we check to see if we should in the session. If we should, we're going to call the end conversation method on the, on the session object. And we're going to use the, the bot framework SDK. We're going to build up our message with our speech, some text, and add in our attachments for the Cortana canvas. Uh, if it wasn't in the session, we're going to use a different API. Again, passing in text, speech, attachments. And again, that idea of ask versus tell. Um, we're going we're gonna to set the input hit hint, which is uh, if it's asked, we're going to actually expect an uh, input to come back from the, from the customer. Or we're going to keep it open, and we're going to accept input. And again, you can see here, fulfilling that contract of, of Git Speech Factory, Git Display Factory, Platform ID, et cetera. We'll also take a look at the, the MSBot Speech Factory. Um, speak last four, again, some SSML. Um, Cortana does it very nicely for us. We just have to pass in the string and, and use the appropriate tags, and it says one, two, three, four. Um, date, actually, for Cortana, we didn't need SSML. We could give it uh, the date in a, an appropriate format, and it would actually say it as we desired. So no SSML there, but um, just some straight text, some manipulation of a date format. And then the MSBot Display Factory. Um, generally, when we talk about our skill, the easiest and the most basic use case for us is account summary, um, except for when you're looking at a display. <laughs> uh, that's, that's rather long, so I'm going to show you the, the, transaction, um, the transaction display code. But uh, it's pretty simple. We're going to pass into the display function. We're going to use the receipt card from the SDK. We're going to give it transactions title. And then from the transaction model that we passed in, again, um, keeping our keeping our model and our, and, and our and Capital One specific code separate from platform, uh, we're going to iterate through that um, transaction item and build a receipt item, give it a price, a title, subtitle, and an image, and uh, our enhanced transaction service to give us a logo that we can, we can put on the card. So we get a nice list of, of transactions uh, with information like the date and, and description and, and the merchant logo that you purchase it from. So it's kind of all tied it together so you can see uh, how we do this in a, in a non-specific manner, a non-channel specific manner. We're going to look at our account balance um, intent, and we sort of have a one-to-one -one mapping between uh, intents that come in and, and uh, a handler that, that takes care of orchestrating over back in AP calls. We'll skip over that part. But once we get all that information that we need to present, um, you can see here, build account balance response. We're going to pass in an adapter, an account list, a couple other pieces of information, some slots or entities that we use. But you can see here, we're going to take the adapter, get out our display factory, call show account summary, and pass in account list. Again, this is in a channel agnostic manner. There's no platform specific code here. Um, and then from here, we're going to do call adapter.send, and read bank total is responsible for uh, creating the verbal response. And we'll jump down to that code. And you can see here, we're going to pull out the total and format it appropriately. Uh, you have total in your account list to speech, and we actually have a helper method on our account class. So to follow through and to show, you can see here um, speech factory speak last four. So ultimately, we, we call the speech factory to, to represent how last four should be presented. And uh, we'll return that text and actually send on. Um, that's it. And I'll let uh, Jim summarize here. OK. Who's that guy? Um, so what did we talk about? <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff. Um, I think the biggest thing is there's a lot of complexity in this voice conversational UI space. Um, and it's, it's growing like mad, that level of complexity. It's growing because the number of NLP platforms that a company like ours might want to integrate with is expanding. Um, you know, like I said, there's Cortana. Certainly um, Amazon and Google are out there. Um, Bixby from Samsung was recently announced. There's Siri, there's others that are coming out of the woodwork. And the number of devices is exploding as well. Again, you know, we saw the show announced just yesterday. I think we saw Invoke from Harman Kardon for Cortana like within the last week, uh, if not before then. Lots of other things uh, coming about. And the way that people actually expect to interact with these devices, particularly mixed mode, it really varies quite dramatically depending on like how much 
graphical real estate you have to work with? Is it a, f a full uh, on native experience or is it simply some, some basic frames that, that you can fill in? Uh, but you have a lot of options there you need to manage. And if you want to build software that you can reuse, you can stay fast, high quality, move quickly, you really have to think about the solution architecture and the patterns and abstractions in the code um, that, uh, that we talked about. Hopefully, we have a lot more to learn, but some of that that we've done already we think is, is good and hope that you find it useful as well. So keep in touch. Um, that's how you can find Eric and I if you want to talk about anything after this or you want to contact us after the conference. We'd love to be involved in a dialogue with you all and keep talking about this. Um, you can also find some really interesting information on Capital One at developer.capitalone.com. We're going to have a blog up there in the next couple of days about what we uh, just presented here, for example. You can see some of our other work or open source projects and stuff like that. Thanks very much.